worship this morning is Hebrews 11, verses 22 and 23. By faith, Joseph, when, he had, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Amen. I'd like to welcome you, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who welcomes you to this service of prayer and praise. Announcements. Anybody have a birthday in the month of March? Nobody. Oh, Whitney does. I mean, a quarter of my family have birthdays in March, but I figured that somebody should. Well, let's sing happy birthday to Wendy. Who's going to start? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I won't tell everybody that it's Sharon's birthday today. Happy birthday, Sharon. Other way of announcements, Hike for Hospice will be held on Sunday, May the 7th. Lenten lunches begin Wednesday, March the 1st. That's this Wednesday. Our church's turn will be serving on March the 15th, so that's in two weeks. Our Irish Supper will be held on Saturday, March the 18th. Games begin at 3 with a potluck supper to follow. Don some green and bring a friend. There will be no Bible study this week, for those of you who do attend Bible study. And there's a the World Day of Prayer is going to be held here this Friday at 1 o'clock. And there are flyers on the back table for anybody who wishes to take them. That's it for the announcements. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 says, it is, not the bread that we, it is not the bread that we break in participation in the body of Christ. You have heard the expression, you are what you eat. When someone says this, they're generally referring to about nutrition. If we eat good nutritious food, our bodies will be healthier than if we eat a lot of non-nutritious junk food. When he gave us the Lord's Supper, Jesus taught that this meal was his body and his blood. So if we follow the logic of becoming what we eat, we might say that we become more like Jesus when we eat the bread and drink the juice. That's because when we participate in this meal, we reflect on Jesus' self-giving sacrifice and we seek to live as he calls us to, showing God's love everywhere and sharing the good news of salvation through Christ. Another important aspect of the meal is that we eat it together in community as one body. In this basic practice, the Lord's Supper teaches us the basics of how to be a, a Christian community. Sharing the food and drink with one another, we learn to share God's grace with one another. In a real and miraculous sense then, when this meal, with this meal we are becoming ever more the body of Christ. We are what we eat. Come next Sunday to share in this meal. I guess I can take this off soon. I'm the only person standing up here and will be the only person standing up here today. I'd like to lead you in a prayer of invitation. Invitation at this time. Jesus, Lord to us, Master, Savior, Prince of Priests, Ruler of our hearts, we are so blessed to have you joining us during this worship service of praise to you and our blessed Trinity. We ask forgiveness for our sin from this past week and add a blessing on this service as we will do in silent personal prayer at this time.
Father, we pray for you to join our hearts, your hearts, your heart of love and peace and grace to us as we bow in humble gratitude for you are our untold, you have untold mercy and grace toward us. As we listen to today's message on heart rate, open our hearts and minds so that we will be strengthened in our walk and become more like Jesus our Savior as you turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. As we sing Jesus Lord to me, what a wonderful prayer this is, followed by asking you to lift us up to higher ground and closing with our continual prayer, have thine own way, Lord. Encourage us through our songs and the message, our prayers, and to each of our hearts so that we can truly leave here saying it was good to be in your house and know without a doubt our God reigns that all the earth keeps silent before him. Praise and honor we bring as we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first song this morning is number 47, Jesus, the Lord to me, we ask you to stand as you are able. Pray for the offering. Father, we thank and praise you for the offering collected by using the words of number 816 in our hymn book. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus, as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruit give. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is Psalm 73, verses 21 through 28. I would like to lead you in the responsive reading at this time. When my heart was grieved, I was senseless and ignorant. Yet I am always with you. You guide me with your counsel. Whom have I in heaven but you? My flesh and my heart may fail. For those who are far from you will perish. But as for me, it is good to be near God. number is uh, 
that we're going to sing is number 549, Higher Ground. And once again, we ask you to stand as you are able. try to find something humorous. Today I'm going to actually, uh, it's a, a real story that I will be telling you. A woman was flying from Melbourne to Brisbane in Australia. Unexpectedly, the plane was diverted to Sydney. The flight attendant explained that they would be, there would be a delay, and if the passengers wanted to get off the aircraft, the plane would reboard in 50 minutes. People got off the plane expect, except one lady who was blind. A man had noticed her as he walked by and could tell the lady was blind because her seeing eye dog lay quietly underneath the seat in front of her throughout the entire flight. He could also tell that she had flown this very flight many times before because the pilot approached her and called her by name saying, Kathy, we are in Sydney for almost an hour. Would you like to get off the plane and stretch your legs? The blind lady replied, no thank you, but maybe Max would like to stretch his legs. Picture this. All the people in the gated area came to a complete standstill when they looked up and saw the pilot wearing sunglasses walking off the plane with a seeing eye dog. <laughs> the people scattered. Not only did they try to change planes, but they also tried to change airlines. A day without laughter is a day wasted. This is entitled, Things Are Not Always As They Appear. The, grump the grumpy man up the street may not be grumpy at all, but his voice and how he mumbles may seem like he is. Or the older lady who keeps peeking out of her window is not nosy, but she is lonely and maybe is someone that you should invite for coffee. The same is true of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We do not know the true heart of anyone, so we should hold each other up in prayer on a daily basis. 
God loves every individual he created and wants each of us to know him personally. Through the gift of salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit who enables us to abide in Jesus and follow him. This is the path of joy and contentment God has planned for us, and we are not to judge anyone, just accept and get to know the real them. Shall we pray? Father, you know everyone's heart. Teach us to accept others as part of your creation and to meet them where they are with, all kind, with kind words and thereby show your love and our compassion. May we reflect Jesus to everyone you put in our pathway. In his name we pray. Amen. This time it's my privilege to lead you in our pastoral prayer. Father God, you are the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. Proverbs 4, 25 and 26 says, Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your great gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet and steadfast in all your ways. Father, in your grace, and with the Holy Spirit, guide us. O our great Redeemer, we acknowledge that we are weak, but you are mighty. Hold us with your powerful hand as we fix our gaze on Jesus. It is so easy to get distracted by this world's glitter and Satan's cunning words and ways. We are so thankful to have a forgiving God and Savior keeping us from stumbling blindly along life's road and keeping our feet from tripping and helping us to stand on the rock of our salvation, our Lord Jesus Christ. With humble gratitude, we come before you in thankful prayer. We thank and praise you for this family of your saints that we live in, in and with, as we continue to love and serve you in many ways. Teach us to be bold in telling others about the grace and love you shower us with. We ask you to be with the members of our families who are sick or under doctor's care, in your, great, in your grace, restore them to health. We also thank you for answer to prayer for those who have good results for tests. We pray for our dear members in retirement and nursing homes. Surround them with a cloak of peace and serenity. What a blessing it is to have dedicated doctors, nurses, and staff attending to those in need. Father, we have all experienced the pain of death, the death of a loved one or someone near to us. In your mercy, comfort those in mourning. Lord, when we see and hear about the world around us, of floods, earthquake, violent storms, and other natural disasters, our hearts goes out to those individuals. Give peace and comfort. Give us a heart of compassion. Wars will continue according to your word until Jesus returns on the clouds of heaven. But we continue pr to pray that all world or torn areas in this world, that your peace may rule in, the, in those spots. We ask that you work in the hearts and minds of world leaders, place their, that they place their citizens ahead of their own personal gain or glory. We ask that you bless all who proclaim your name to hungry ears. May the gospel's joyful sound reach out and grip waiting hearts to the truth of salvation. We pray for our families, friends, and loved ones for safety through the week ahead. We also pray to you to move in the hearts of those who are not walking in a right relationship with you. Lastly, Father, be with me as I bring your message today. Bless all who hear it here and on the website. Father, to you be the glory and the praise. What a great and wonderful Father you are to us. What a glorious Savior we have in Jesus. What a comfort and peace we have through the Holy Spirit's leading. We love you, our blessed Trinity, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I will be taking sips of water quite often because I have a medication that dries out my mouth. So I have to stop and have a sip every now and then. Today's message is entitled Heart Rate. It's not the message that I had prepared and ready when Nancy asked me if I could do the service today. But this being February, which is Heart Month, I thought maybe I should do something on hearts. As you probably know, my heart is not the best heart in the world, and I've had heart problems. 
But that's okay, because God takes care of all of us. We have three Bible texts today. The first one is Ezekiel 36, 20, 22 through 29, where we read the following. Therefore say to the Israelites, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and the name you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before the rise. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. And I will sprinkle you with clean water, and you will be clean. And I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all of your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in, it, in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I, give you, I gave to your ancestors, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. And I will save you from all of your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and make it plentiful, and, it will bring, and I will not bring famine upon you. The second reading is from Matthew 5, verse 8, part of the Beatitudes, where it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The last reading is from Luke chapter 8, verses 11 through 15. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and when the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but when a time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns are those who hear, but as they go the wrong way, they are choked out by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stand for those with noble and good hearts, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. As I said, this month we, is Heart Month. We celebrated Valentine's. We hear a lot about hearts in the month of February. There are coronary risk evaluations done in clinics and at hospitals. We and our doctors are concerned about the health of our hearts. I think all of us here know someone who has had heart surgery or treatments. If not, Elsie and I are two people who have had those. We do have ongoing issues, have meds to keep our hearts functioning reasonably well, or should I say, in a new normal way. You can get information on hearts and the things to look out for in order to keep a healthy heart. The question is, how heart smart are you? We all have heard about get people getting heart transplants. You may wonder, is it worth it, all that pain, for living a short time longer? Others seem to adjust and keep on pumping along. The word heart can be found often in the scriptures, and rightly so. When it does, it seldom means the organ that's in our chest or the muscle that keeps on pumping and pumping about one time per second. It doesn't talk about the things your doctor is concerned about that makes regular heart checks, EKG, blood tests, echocardiogram that your doctor may do. They may also make you do a treadmill test or an angiogram to see if you have any blockages that may lead to a heart attack. More tests than we would like. In the Bible, heart refers to such things as personality, intellect, memory, emotions, desires, and will. Actually, as you and I think about it, we do the same. For example, we say he or she has a big heart. Of course, we're not referring to the muscle in their chest, although the left side of my heart grew by 25% before I had my surgery, but since then it has gone back down. It means more than that in the scriptures. Interestingly, the Bible also speaks about God having a heart, 
it does say so in Isaiah 11 verse 8 where God says my heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows in one of the passages we read earlier Ezekiel prophesies about a wonderful forward-looking truth a new heart and a new spirit in you we are to receive a heart of flesh and not a stone one that's quite a change we know change is something we all need to some degree each of us has to look at our own heart to see how much flesh or stone it is made of Jesus in the parable speaks about the seed of the gospel and its life-changing ability on the fertile ground of a noble and good heart with the resulting fruit life-changing well we want to ask what kind of a heart is it that Ezekiel promised God would be giving us what heart is pure what kind of heart is the pure of heart that Jesus talks about in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount let us have a look so we can test our own hearts when doctors do heart tests they're not always 100 percent accurate but they do the best what procedure do we use to measure the condition of your hearts and mine i would like to try something a little different today and perhaps it is helpful i want to ask you to test your hearts i want each of us to take an exam of our hearts I will be asking a lot of questions, and you get to answer them. No, not going to ask for your answers. They're yours and they're personal. Author Nancy Beach, a teaching pastor, or was a teaching pastor of Willow Creek Church in Chicago. Don't know if you know the church, but it has approximately 2,000 members. She suggested the five areas that we are going to use today as we look at our hearts. Five areas checking our hearts. Check, check how it is functioning. Certainly they are not exhaustive or definitive, maybe even not the best, but they may be helpful for you to look at the indicators to see the health of our heart, our soul, and our spiritual condition. They are emotions, moments, fun, people, and whispers. Let us expand on these and give some possible key questions as you do this heart exam. While well, you're doing a heart exam, I've done mine. Emotions. A healthy heart experiences emotions. A healthy person cries at times and laughs at times. A healthy heart is touched by joy, anger, gratitude, and love. So having said that, I ask you to ask yourself, have I cried lately? Have I really laughed? A healthy heart is touched by the pain and joy of others, as well as personal pain and joy. A healthy heart experiences emotional change when this happens. I would just suggest that Elijah's heart, when he was running from Jezebel, was not, a health, was not healthy anymore. After all, he wished to die and fell asleep under a tree. That's more a state of numbness, incapable of feeling anymore. Truly a heart that has some major blockages and waiting for a total seizure. Now it's your turn. How would you rate your capacity to experience deep emotions? Not necessarily for people close to you or your family. I mean, look critically at how you react to good and bad situations. What is your emotion? The scale is from one to five, with five being the best and one being the worst. What is your rating? Let's move on with our heart rating. Moments. Author Frederick Buchner advises the following, and listen to it very carefully. Listen to your life. All moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. Good advice. Oh, how often we fail to seize the moment that God provides. We fail to seize the day we are given we want instead for we, we wait instead for what it doesn't come. We're not in the present. Instead we dwell in the past or anticipate the future. And the whole time we're missing out on the present. When our hearts are working right, when we do what we're intended to do, we're able to look at each other in the eye and relish each moment. 
were not in such a devastating hurry to move on and see what we and see what we miss in the present moment. We must learn to listen to our children, grand and great grandchildren, to our spouses and to our friends. So often we are busy thinking of answers that we don't really hear what they are saying. Savor the present. Look for the shine in their eyes when they're telling you something exciting or they're showing you something new to share a happening, especially with the grand and the great grandkids. We should do so without being somewhere else in our minds. A healthy heart savors the present and doesn't skim through it. It's mindful of what is happening and relishing it for what it is. With that in mind, maybe we should ask those around us, am I there for you? Ask yourself how you would rate your moment mindfulness from high to low. Where are you? The next one is also a challenge. Let's learn together. Fun. We all like to have some fun, don't we? As I said in the seniors' moments, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Life can be so overwhelming. So much can demand our time. Needs pile up. We get worn out and all too serious is life. Again, a healthy heart has the capacity and the need to laugh, to relax, to enjoy life's events. Jesus came to give us life and give it to the full. John 10.10 10 says, John 10.10 10 tells us of this rather clearly. The King James Version says that he came to give life and give it abundantly. The New International Version says we are to live it to the full. Any way you look at it, it translates it. It means to live life as God intended it to be lived. When we no longer get on the floor and play with the kids, or laugh, or simply cannot see any joy in life, we are asking for a heart failure, for a collapse. You may call it burnout, whatever you call it. It is devastatingly destructive. Are you just too busy to, to do things, or do you set time aside for sports, a favorite TV show, quiet reading, spending time with friends and family, taking a walk, hobbies, or anything that is a change from your normal routine. Time to rate yourself once again with the fun factor, high, medium, or low. Are you at risk? The next factor is one that closely ties to church fellowship, people. How do you see people? When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. He was grieved to tears about the death of his friend Lazarus as he looked at death, pain, and destruction. So just how do you look at people? Do you judge them before you know them? Do you find people and their problems overwhelming? Do you resent phone calls asking for help? I have a sister-in-law who phones about once a month, talks for about 30 minutes. During that time, I get to say about 20 words. It's all about her and her problems. Am I okay with that? Yep. She needs an outlet to get her frustrations out. Since my brother died about 10 years ago, she needs people to talk to. Do you dodge requests for help or look at them as a ministry showing the love of Jesus? People are important and need to feel welcomed. A healthy heart is empathetic. It listens to the hurt of others. It's willing to take some time to follow the old native saying, to walk a mile in their moccasins. It can be comforting to listen and learn that maybe a problem that you have is something that someone else has and you can share it with them and, and thereby prop each other up. That doesn't mean no boundaries in your life. That would be destructive too. And when all is said and done, 
What is the standard by which you will be judged? 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 says, The greatest of these is love. This is still the, the standard that God uses. The greatest of these is love. Do you love people or do you just put up with them? Have you been moved by someone else's lostness? Measure yourself once again. How loving have you been lately? What you did last year doesn't count. Where do you fit in? As I look at this congregation, it's a very welcome. Guests are always invited downstairs for coffee time, as all of us are. Do you always sit at the same table? Or do you move around to different tables so you get to know everybody and instead of just a few? Well, folks, how do you rate? How would your friends rate you? How would your acquaintances rate you? How would your neighbors rate you? The final factor is more subtle. Whispers. Recall again what Eli that Elijah heard God in the still, small voice. Does God need to get a megaphone to get your attention? God speaks in a variety of ways. Are you listening? Am I? We had some discussion on this in our men's Bible study. He is always with us in the Holy Spirit, communicating with us. We claim the promise that Jesus made when he gave us the Great Commission. He is speaking to you at all times. Can you hear him? He sometimes does so in the most awkward moments. He can do it in some of the most unusual ways. Are you always talking? Is God here? All God hears is yak, 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 and can't get a word in edgewise? God has a way of coming into our hearts when we least expect him. The Lord sometimes turns the most ordinary places into holy ground. A simple church service can become holy ground. A time of prayer around a sick bed can become holy ground. A special place may be out in nature where God wants is where God wants to meet us. As we all need we all need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us recognize God's holy ground. It is more than just a song that we sing. God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. It is a truth. The healthy heart is listening for his voice wherever it is heard. You and I may have missed a lot of messages because we are not tuned in to God's radio station. Are you attentive to his promptings? God is speaking in my ear. Is my ear open? Rate yourself again regarding the whispers as well as the shouts. Remember God is in the business of healing hearts. He is in the business of transforming them. He does, this kind, he does a kind of heart transplant that is needed. I will give you a new heart. And he does it now. No waiting list like hospital for heart transplants. Someone already died to make it possible. The question is, who is responsible to make sure we have a healthy heart? The answer is obvious. We are. I've got to make sure that I work at it. With his help, we have to look at our lives and make sure that we have the right exercise program. We have to get out and do what hearts do. We have got to practice what we believe. This includes time spent reading God's word every day, as well as just listening to his word and looking at the world around you as he speaks to you through it, as he speaks to the stillness of your souls. That calls for slowing down, taking what we know and do, what we should do and just do it. I've got to, and you've got to make sure we are doing what God intended for us to do. We've got to be functioning in life, utilizing the gifts he has given us. There is no age limit on receiving or using the gifts we receive. We need to know our limits as well as our strength. I cannot be, and you cannot be, everything to everybody. 
I have to set limits and say no as well as yes. Only those who know how to say no will be able to carry out the yeses when asked of them. Otherwise, you're helped to skelter everywhere, getting nothing done. In Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9, Moses said the following. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments I give you today, these commandments I give you. Today you are to do are to put them on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. I don't know if any of you be, have been in a committed Jewish home or business. One of the paint companies we dealt with in Montreal was a, a, an Orthodox Jew, Jewish company. On every door frame, there was a little tube about three inches long and about the diameter of a pencil. In the tube, are sayings from the Bible. When they go through the door, they touch the tube. They keep up this tradition. They take this from verse 9, from what I just read to you. Well, these verses also instruct us to love God with all our heart and how we live this out in our day-to-day -day living. I read in a sermon, how would your life be different if we took verse 8 literally as the Jews take verse 9. Verse 8, eight says, bind them on your forehead. If the word Christian was tattooed on your forehead, do you think you would up talk or behave differently? Well, if you had said yes in your mind, then it's about time you started doing it without it tattooed on your forehead. Scripture does not shy away from urging us to keep the commands of God in focus. We humans are incredibly forgetful, and the Spirit knows how often we neglect to focus our hearts and minds on the Lord. We often seek the wisdom from, of this world when we should be seeking God's wisdom. Seek out what God wants you to do. There can be joy in your life when you do. Find joy in accepting yourself as God made you without a need to please certain people or to be threatened by the success of others. You are God's special work, unique, a once in eternity person. Remember, God is at work in you and through you. He is a big God and this big God is interested in you and your heart, you and your life. You don't have to be a president, a prime minister, a movie star in order to make it on the front page of his newspaper. He knows you better than you know yourself. And Psalm 139 teaches us that God who made us is interested in you for your sake. After all, our God loved us so much, he sent his son. So, what is your heart rate? high, medium, or low? That's for you to answer, and not for me. Do you think God is interested in the condition of your heart? Take a look at yours. What do you think he has seen? What do you think you have to do differently? Are you, as prepared, to take, are you prepared to take your maker's advice? Our God is love and forgiveness. He loves you and he will give you a heart of flesh. Let us pray. Father, you lavish us with love and grace. Bind our hearts to yours. Keep showing us the way to walk and talk with others so they will be drawn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next song is number 541, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And once again, we ask you to stand.
benediction. All glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the irradiance of your holiness, the purity of your righteousness, the beauty is, that is simply and profoundly you. Protect us through the week ahead, we pray. Amen.